the last 22 years, we've run a busy shop in the automotive industry. For many of them years, this was a job I truly loved. Honing my expertise to become a master of my trade, we had built a solid business with a reputation to match. But in more recent times, we felt we needed something more from life. Living, working in the same town since birth, there was a wider world out there and we wanted to explore it. Many of our friends had travelled the world in their younger years, while Claire and I chose to start a family and build a business. This was our choice and the right one for us, but it had always been our dream once our son went on to higher education to travel Europe in search of adventure, wild landscapes and big carp. 2020 would be the year we made our dreams a reality. Parting way with our business, renting out our home in the UK, we would embark on an open-ended road trip around Europe, where the only limits would be our imagination and determination. For this, our most challenging adventure to date, we decided we would need to build a motorhome specifically tailored to our needs. We enlisted the help of our good friend Robin to assist us in the design process of our build. Choosing a Mercedes Sprinter for its large load capacity, we hoped this vehicle would give us enough space to live and accommodate our fishing equipment. Over the next six months, we set about modifying, converting and building what we considered to be the ultimate cart wagon. Creating a homely space for us to enjoy, with essential features such as an oven, shower with hot water and most importantly, a fridge to keep our beers cold. Externally, we had added plenty of features to ensure and prevent us getting stuck in our vehicle. We completed our project two months before our departure, giving us plenty of time to organise ourselves and pack but little did we realise there was a global pandemic just around the corner. At the beginning of this epidemic, in France but also in Europe, and things will continue to accelerate. Over the yeah, bro, well, tomorrow the president will talk at 8 o'clock about the situation yeah. in France because it's really bad right now. Yeah. So, yeah, it will talk at 8 and we will say for sure that the border will close in 10 hours, so maximum tomorrow. We must be there because the, the border will close. Mate, I've got to leave now then really, haven't I, bruv? Or leave tonight? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have no choice, bro. It's like this. With the news the border would close the following day at 12 noon, we frantically packed up our essentials, loaded our van, and put the remainder of our belongings into storage. Arriving at the Eurotunnel terminal that night, we was lucky enough to board one of the last trains to depart the UK before the French lockdown. Well, Claire. We did it, baby. We did it. We finally did it. And do you know what? I actually thought... It wasn't going to happen. But the last 48 hours, it really felt like we wasn't going to go. It's been brutal. And I think brutal can't even nail it. But we did it. And we did it together because we pushed and pushed and pushed. And we did it as a team. And teamwork makes, makes dream work. work. As we left the French side of the Eurotunnel terminal, we had an immense sense of relief, knowing that we had made it into Europe and for now keeping the dream very much alive. Our first stop would be our friend's commercial lake, Etang de Possière, a quick pit stop for the night to get some well-earned rest before continuing on to our new home in the morning. Well, here we are in France, but unfortunately it's not the start to our life-changing adventure that we'd hoped for. 36 hours ago, the French announced that the country would be going into lockdown at 12pm today. So me and Claire made a mad dash to get all our house packed up and uh, into storage and hit the road to be able to enter the country before the borders closed. Now you might be thinking to yourself, why would you want to enter a country that's just about to close its borders? Our house in the UK has been rented out and the consequence of that is the new tenants move in in 12 days time which would render me and Claire homeless and ultimately living in our van in the UK and neither of us fancied that. So we packed all our stuff up and we headed across the border arriving at our good friend Keith's Lake at around 12 o'clock last night. Now our buddy was very kind to offer us the opportunity to stay over at his lake on the way down for a well earned break as uh, we hadn't really slept for the last 36 hours of all what was going on. We arrived at the venue at 12 o'clock last night and we decided to stick two rods out each, not really caring about the spots, more, uh, more of a token gesture before getting our heads down after a very, very busy 36 hours. 
Well, just morning to no fish, which isn't really much of a drama. But um, after speaking to the landlord of our new property in France, uh, she's unable to meet us for another six days. So we've decided to stay here for a little while and see if we can catch a carp. Now, this is a commercial fishery, and me and Claire haven't fished commercial fisheries for quite some time now. At the end of the day, we're not going to be going fishing for the foreseeable future in France. So we thought we'd take this opportunity to enjoy some time with our friends and hopefully catch a carp or two. Today, me and Claire have been for a walk around the lake. Initially, we didn't see too much until we arrived in a shallow bay with lots of snags. But a number of big carp haunting in the snags, hanging around the patches of weed. Yeah, so we decided we're going to move over to the other side. Now, this is one incredibly beautiful venue with gin clear water, lots of weed, tree line margins, and lots of snags for carp to hide out in. To be honest, it's my kind of fishing from back in the UK. So, uh, yeah, we've been for a good walk around. We spotted a number of fish. So now we're going to pack up, get around the other side, and hopefully tonight we can get a bend in the rod or carp or two in the sack. Watch this space. With our kit packed up and the move round to the other side complete, we set about getting installed in our new swims, tackling up with heavy gear so we could fish the snag safely where we had seen the carp earlier that morning. see the fish hanging around this morning. All these trees are nicely undercut under here. It's completely clean underneath this tree. I can get my bait under here, just pucker. Don't have to worry about getting snagged up or anything. our rods out on the spots, I sat back to take in the picturesque view, watching the carp go about their business. Our confidence levels were high going into that evening. As the sunlight faded, Claire prepared our first homemade meal in the van. This was a luxury for Claire, having all the facilities of home, bankside. I didn't imagine our adventure starting off like this, you know. Yeah, what, a pay lake? No, not a pay lake. Just all the stress and drama going on in the world. Just, yeah. Yeah, true. But it's tough times for a lot of people, babe, you know, like. Everyone. Everyone, absolutely everyone. We're quite lucky, really, to have each other. What's for dinner, then? I am cooking pasta with peppers, onion, garlic, aubergine, courgettes, tomatoes, and then a little bit of tuna mixed in as well. Sounds wonderful. With a little bit of chilli always. <laughs> so, yeah. Sounds like a hearty meal after a hard day's graft, eh, darling? Definitely. So here we are now on day two. And as of yet, we still haven't caught any carp. Now, the first night we didn't really fish that effectively, as we did turn up in the middle of the night. But yesterday, I did put the effort in. We spent a lot of time looking around, trying to find spots, popping a drone up, seeing if we could locate the areas that the carp were hiding out in. And yeah, we did spot a few. Pretty confident going into last night. But this morning, I woke up to motionless rods. So we decided to go and have a quick check on some of the spots. It would appear that the uh, carp had actually picked out all the corn and the flake and left the whole boilies behind. So as you can well imagine, it was pretty frustrating for me. Now what I can conclude from this is the carp are actually feeding on smaller bits and may even be a bit shy of boilies. This is a pressured water being a commercial venue. Even though it is a wild and beautiful place, it would appear that the carp identified boilies with danger, especially this early on in the spring. So I've decided to go for a couple of changes to try and help me catch some carp. First one being switching over to a fluorocarbon D-rig. Now the reason I've chose that is because this rig is virtually invisible in the margin. When you've got it on the deck, it's got good separation from the lead 
and uh, literally there is nothing linking the lead to the hook bait, which I think is going to be an edge in a situation like this. Second of all, I've decided to switch half my rods over to Tiger Nuts, hoping that the particle presentation is going to be less threatening and less suspicious to the carp, and hopefully will get me that bite that we need. Yeah, see if you can spot another um, carp trail through the weed. Uh, that looks like one there, doesn't it? So they like a carp trail look, going through the weed. That's definitely one there. Yeah, yeah I think there's one there, yeah. and I think yeah, and here. And so I think if we fish here, good for you. Yeah, that's it. Let's get it. It's quite a nice little clear spot as well, yeah. so definitely come through yeah look right you see there. one trail there one trail there so you've got two that all both turn up on the same spot yeah it's got to be uh it's got to be good for a bite isn't it just want to drop my bait what i do i'll just stick it on the edge of the baited area yeah as uh, the bigger ones generally feed off the edge from my past experience so uh yeah i can see the nuts on the bottom there I just want to drop my rig right on the edge of that baited right patch. There, yeah. yeah. Proper soft that is in the silt, but I'm not really fussed about fishing in the silt, Claire. You know that last year we had great success fishing in the silt. <laughs> silt success. Silt success. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Sweet, I'm happy with that. Yeah, Got a nice clean line out the weed as well here. Parker. Get ready to jump out with a rope. Yeah. Don't stand up, you're gonna fall over. Oh, Claire, no! You kicked him with your shoe. That boat is gonna stink now. Oh, boy. No time to left. You just tip it in the water. This is gonna smell like shit. We're gonna have to get wash this out at home. We're gonna have to do it with buckets. With our change in approach actioned, there was no doubt in our minds we would catch that night. And if we didn't, I would have to seriously evaluate whether I was cut out for commercial lake fishing. The night had been productive with two runs and one fish landed, but the morning's action was far from over. Taking to the boat to land a carp that had become entangled in the weed, it was double bubble for me, and proof for changing tactics was the right one. lovely start to the day. Proper angry common. Rattled off at first light this morning. One of the two spots that we made fundamental changes to yesterday. We'd noticed that the fish had been coming in and eating all our flake along with the maize and leaving the half bodies and whole bodies behind. So I uh, decided to have a bit of a change around. Switched two rods to tiger nuts. Fishing a uh, claw rig with a um, fluorocarbon hook link and a D presentation. And yeah, it was both of them two rods that rattled off this morning. This lovely 32 pound common, proper mincer, give a hell of a scrap out in the weed bed. Ended up getting tangled up in the weed a few times, but eventually we were able to land him safely. Phenomenal hook hold from the claw hooks, penetrated all the way down to the shank. Sure, this baby was never coming off. <sighs> what a lovely carp. Now I can't wait to show you the next one. One down, one to go. It's 
So here's number two from this morning's brace. Caught from under an overhanging tree and a nice clay spot the fish have been rubbing up against. So today me and Claire are gonna swap all the rigs over to the same presentation and hope that we can nick a few more bites before we have to go home tomorrow. Lovely carp. We sat it out for the rest of the morning in the hope of some more action, but come the afternoon with no more bites, we thought it best to go check on our spots. Scaling trees to get a better view of the bottom, it soon became apparent that all the tiger nut spots had been cleared out. It was time to redo our rods, as fish were active in our area and clearly on the feed. heading back out to the spot where the second bite from. There was a new one yesterday, a little clay area under a tree where the fish had clearly been rubbing up against. And uh, yeah, they're always a sure spot in the spring. Fish love getting in their clay, trying to rub up against it to get the minerals or whatever. And uh, yeah, they've always been productive in the past. So um, as soon as I see that spot, I decided that would be a place for a rig for sure. Produced the goods this morning. So just get a bit more bait under this tree. that last one over quite a bit of bait so don't normally use lots of tigers but um these are nice and gloopy got all the enzymes coming out and uh yeah i'm fishing a balanced bait and uh i don't actually think they have to target that bait when it's balanced that well just sort of hoovering up and uh yeah they end up catching it in their mouth so um yeah gonna carry on with what worked this morning tight under there. It's important I get the lead in front of the hook bait. Yeah, that's pucker. I can actually see that it's sitting down there. The lead's nice and concealed. My bait's actually sitting next to about five or six other ones, so that should be the one, I'm sure. I've just got to try and back out of here. Line on any of these trees. And then get back lead in. These fish are very, 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 very wary. It's not like uh, public fishing that I'm used to, where you, if you can just find them, you can normally catch them. That's for uh, try and be as discreet as possible as they are pressured carp. Something that I've not had to do for quite some time, as like I said before, I've not really fished that many uh, commercials in my life. Certainly not for the last six years, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm just gonna pop a little back lid on now. I've just pushed the rubber in, so uh, when I get the take, it just springs off straight away. This help keeps that uh, that line down. Make sure this line angle's right. I've just got the line in my hand. Just gonna line myself up with my rods. Just make sure this is straight. Yep. Yeah, that's about it. Lovely. Just gonna drop that in there. Lovely. Spot on. Right. I should keep all that pinned down nice. Hopefully my leader isn't going to spit them fish now. Just going to attach my second bat lead. Once again, not pushing it all the way in, just to the first rib. So it's just nicked on, so it comes off straight away. For me, it's important to get that line pinned down, but still having a tight line fishing up into that snag. There we go, pucker. That should do a trick. With all the rods deployed, the rain that had been forecast arrived along with the steep air pressure drop. This was 
big carp weather at its best, filling us with the utmost confidence for the night ahead. As predicted, the carp gods were kind, rewarding our efforts with a massive fish that night, but the morning's action was far from over. The rod's got to go in a minute, that is. A few liners on that one now. With repeated liners on the right-hand rod, we deployed the drone to take a closer look. With a number of fish feeding on the spot, we knew it was a matter of time before the rod was away. Carp's carp, baby. Fun! He's lovely, isn't he? Yeah. Fucking clean in on it. Boom! Yes, Claire. Oh, net up, net up, net up. That's not a baby, Claire. Yeah. Boom! <laughs> That's a decent fish. Can't, yeah, baby! Well done, say art. Oh, no. I hate it. I hate. I hate the camera. Don't worry. Right, don't okay. worry about that. Okay. What a wonderful start to the day. We was just about to take some pictures of Samir's fish and my rods went screaming off. Can't tell you how happy I am to have this beast in my hands after losing one last night about 12. So yeah, get my rods back out and catch some more monsters. Buzzing. Yay! <laughs> 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 Oh, it's going down me waders. <laughs> <laughs> well Shit! With Claire's carp safely returned, it was now my turn to hold one up for the camera. Yeah, you see how big that is. Well, look how old he is, Keith. He's look, look at his eye. Look how old his eye is. Look at that. Look at him. That's a cop. What a warrior, a real old carp, probably one of the original stock and not much younger than the gravel pit itself. Caught from the same overhanging tree on the clay spot where I fished yesterday and had the common, it's really starting to do the do. I used the same fluoro D rig, which was nice and concealed under on the clay, virtually invisible on the lake bottom. Seems to be the tactic that's providing the goods for me and Claire. While we was about to photograph this earlier on, Claire's rod went ripping off from the same spot where she'd lost one last night. And uh, things are really starting to turn on here now. And hopefully, start of things to come. <sighs> what a creature. Woo! 
Woo! Yeah! Yes, Claire! <laughs> Wicked! The atmosphere was electric that morning, with a smell of big carp in the air, and proof if any, small changes in tactics can yield big results. Much like the day before, the rest of the morning remained quiet. Taking in our surroundings in the early afternoon, we witnessed the most carp activity so far on the lake. It was clear the fish had well and truly woken up. As we prepared to set our lines for one last time, we knew this session wasn't over yet. were set with the utmost precision that afternoon, leaving nothing to chance for the forthcoming night, but we wouldn't have to wait that long for our first taste of action. Just sitting there watching a movie, and uh, when I put out yesterday, I decided to leave it, and it's only gone and rattled off. Feels like a decent fish, it's kiting hard left at the minute. There's possibly a chance I may have to go out in the boat. That's a black one. Aye? Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, it is grassy. <laughs> we'll check that out for an absolute whopper. Well, in excess of 50 pounds, an absolutely colossal, colossal grass carp. I'm not particularly a fan of these, but you must admit, what an incredible creature it is. I've got to get him slipped back now, try and get my rod back out on the spot, and hope I can pick up another bite of a proper carp tonight. Um, oh. Well done, mate. Well done. Ready? Mm. What a ridiculously large creature. <sighs> We're sending you back to the depths. I'm afraid you don't get a kiss from me for a change. <laughs> See you later. Let's get Rods back out. It's our final morning at Tang de Possier. We're just about to pack up and head off to our new home. But just before we do, I've got a beautiful carp to show you in the sack. Let's go take a look. Thank you for all now. Lovely, well done, Claire. Well done, Claire. So around one o'clock this morning, Samir lost the fish. Was slightly disappointed, but two hours later, my rods went screaming. Gave me a mega battle, this 34 pound beautiful mirror. Can't tell you how buzzing I am. Good times. Well, lovely carp, Claire, well done, babe. Thank you. Well 
buzzing. Absolutely buzzing. You let him go. Well then, Claire, my little session has come to an end. Have you enjoyed yourself? Always enjoying myself, especially when I'm fishing and with nature. Yeah, we've had a wonderful time here. Caught some beautiful carp as well. But now it's time to go to our new home, isn't it? Let's go. What is it? Six hour drive? Yep, six hour drive south. So um, we're about to go say goodbye to the fishery owner. Yep. Get our kit packed up and uh, hit the road then. Let's go. Off. Thanks for having us, Keith, mate. Nice. You had a lovely time, Mush. Got some lovely lot. carp. Thanks, man. Thanks a lot. Been and, uh, lovely. We we'll see you soon. Definitely. Don't be strangers. Care, mate. Look Good after luck. yourself. Yeah. Good luck. Stay safe. Got the keys on their house. Oh my god, let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go.